me uh, two oh. weeks ago. Oh, yeah. Russell Simmons, he goes around and does the inspirational speeches and oh, motivational yeah. speech. Uh, oh, yeah. Motivational he's, speaker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's he's awesome. Yeah. He's an awesome person. So I worked with him, and uh, Rick Rubin is awesome, too. Uh, yeah. Great producer. Uh, so this would start my... This would definitely start my career. I was on the Raising Hell album, obviously. This was an album that was a collage of rock music from Aerosmith, which was Joey's favorite group at the time, Run. Mm -hmm. um, and at this time, I lived next door to him. We lived on the same block okay. so uh, in Hollis, Queens. So I did that recording. Um, and then later, um, from the age of 13 all the way to like 19, I barely finished high school because it was the music, music, music. You yeah. know? So I was involved with a lot of gospel stuff. I did Tremaine Hawkins, Andre Crouch. Um, there were a couple of other like major minor gospel groups that toured, you know, and I recorded with them and toured with them. But when I was 19, right after I finished high school, MTV had their <laughs> first video tour. Yeah. Uh, so that was Color Me Bad, um, Belle Viv DeVoe, CNC Music Factory, you know, the whole pop thing. And um, I did this tour, which would open me up into another world because we ended up opening up for Paul Abdul for another two years. And that was the tour that I was just very fortunate to be on because all the other groups kind of fell off by the wayside. And the musicians that were playing for Paul Abdul were incredible, uh, coming from Shaka Khan's camp, mm -hmm. uh, Earth, Wind & Fire's camp, you know. So I mixed and mingled with these guys, and lo and behold, after meeting tour managers and all of this stuff, I ended up on the pop and rock circuit for a while. However, my background is jazz. Hmm. So I'm a, you know, a fusion jazz drummer. And... Um, Basically, after about eight years of touring with pop and mostly pop groups, then I switched over to rock, which uh, the first guy that I played for in rock was David Burns from the Talking Heads. Uh, that led me to playing with Marianne Faithful, and that whole camp in Marianne Faithful was Roger Waters from Pink Floyd, uh, Ron Woods, uh, She's Mick Jagger. She's surrounded by that kind of production all the time. So I was there, you know, experiencing that on the tours and mixing and mingling. And, and um, finally, I ended up playing for Kenny Garrett, which was in the mix, uh, uh, an, a major jazz artist from Warner Brothers. And also uh, Mulgar Miller. I played for him for a while. Uh, major pianist and we did all the festivals and all of that stuff i didn't get a chance to record with those two artists but i played on their tours so you said a few minutes ago now you said run you right just, just call yourself run <laughs> no, no nowadays i mean j just run <laughs> you, you gotta shorten it up you know i bring that up because you know it's funny people like if, if it tells someone my name is james all they right. automatically call me jim like they right. automatically switch it up <laughs> so you know you say run dmc all say hey run uh, hey you know, right, right exactly you know, so everybody shortens everything up so you shorten it up too so you just run <laughs> exactly exactly well you see you see what i did with courtney williams i said see will right so you're gonna shorten it up there's too many too many syllables in there you gotta it shorten just, it up it make it a little like, easier word economy i guess is exa what it is exactly yeah so uh now it, it, working with aerosmith uh -huh. steven tyler um that was in studio time together. Like, what's it, what's it like uh, to have to work with? That was, was he a was he a big ego or no I mean, no 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 working with we're working with those guys because actually um, I was in the studio rehearsing with uh, Marianne Faithful when those guys came in. Uh, but for Run uh, on the Raising Hell album, they were there when I was actually I did two sessions. I did the first session for the song Perfection with jam master j which by the way i must give a little uh you know uh a, a, an honor to uh and rest in peace because he's not here with us today but he produced he did something very magic for me as a drummer he produced uh and brought together what we would call swing inside of r&b which is what's happening now and when i talked to teddy riley teddy riley said you're the guy who played on that he's like that's crazy because you influenced me. 
like with those rhythms i said you know what i really want to take the credit but it's not me who did that <laughs> like i was just a tool but jam master jay was like oh if you swing on the cymbal then you bring that over to the hi-hat and you just give me four four and a snare and a bass and i was like a little kid like gleaming like <laughs> what is this oh my god i'm having a drum gas you know like i was like oh you know i was sitting there going i can't believe this man like you know and um he said i said what is that and he said i call it swing but it's just swing for R and B. He said, "I don't know what it's called." And then Teddy Riley came later and called it New Jack Swing. So Did you just say a drum gasm? I said a drum gasm. Oh I have a lot goodness. of those. Do you really? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's too funny. What? So you you probably spent a lot of your life on the road. Yeah, I most did. of. I I spent most of my life on the road, which is why I had a crash and burn. I left music. I quit music for about four years. Yeah, and this was like. Uh, I didn't want to hear it. I didn't want to be around it. But I think everybody goes through that when you when your drive is from something so passionate, yeah. and, and you have a lot of compassion for something. So um, I hit that, and I thought it was the end of the world because I was at that time I was twenty five or twenty six, and um, I just took off. I didn't want to hear it. I didn't want to be around it. The nightlife, nothing. Yeah, you know. So it was four years of not playing. And I don't know if you ever read that book by Miles Davis. There's this chapter where he talks about when he left for so long and then he comes back to play and he's like, holy crap, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, and I had a, at that time I had a nice mentor teacher who was actually a female, uh, Camille, uh, Camille Gaynor. And she was like, you know, you got to get back on the line again because it definitely is a line. Yeah. And you got to get back on it. And I was like, that's when the reality of me leaving set in. I was like, you know, I, I still love this and I want to be back. And well, so, it's, yeah, it's kind of like kind of like the same thing as radio. I mean, I've been I've been in radio for 26 years. Uh, so I've been wow. doing radio broadcasting. Never wanted to be on television because I have a face for radio. Okay. Um, but you. like you go away for a little while and you got, you kind of start you get the withdrawal. All right. <laughs> I gotta get back. I, I gotta get that's, back in. You know I gotta get that's back in. That's exactly what it sounded. That's exactly what it felt like. It's but, weird. But it's you know weird. what? Now, so now I gotta ask you this. You say you were gone for four years, but you're a drummer. I've known a couple of drummers in my life, right. and you didn't give up drumming. You just gave oh, up no, no. the business itself. No, because like get, every drummer I've ever known, they're always tapping no, something no, or banging was, something or pounding or I some. I'm so glad you said that. I'm so glad you said this. And I'm so glad I'm getting an interview for this because I, I tell you what you just tapped into. I am not that guy. Really? Yeah. I'm not. You you see all of the videos and stuff like that where you see the drummer for like some rock group and he's like, everything is drums. Every I'm not that guy. You know, the, 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 the drummers that I know, their leg, the legs always move. Right, right, you're, right. You're right. sitting there you, talking to no, them. No, no. And they're, listen, they're, listen. You know, I'm going to make you crack up right now. <laughs> you'll come to my apartment and you'll like come in. You'll be like, what is this, Bach? What are you listening to? It's like, doo, 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 doo. would you like a cocktail? <laughs> <laughs> like I'm that guy. I'm like, no man. That's I, funny. So you don't bring your work home with you. No. Some people, I, some people go with a briefcase and see, they walk out. And, all right question. Somebody did I pay you? Yeah. <laughs> no, but we could we could work something out with that. That's that's not a problem. <laughs> no, it's, it, it, it's okay. Another funny thing that you say because, uh, no. No, I'm I'm definitely going to say I've always believed... Okay, even growing when I was touring, for example, I knew that there was another life outside of this because I would watch everybody and it was always about production. It's like, dude, don't you like go out? And they were like, no, what are you talking about? I don't even understand what you're talking about, Courtney. You, you, you're crazy. Yeah. And so I actually, this time period that I'm telling you about when I left music, I got, I saw a video of myself. Okay. And it was in front of, I'm doing something like we were doing half stadium. So it's like 80,000 or 90,000 people. And I'm like amped. I'm on the tour bus and they're like, Mr. Williams, we got the video for you. You know, that's when I was Mr. Williams. And uh, <laughs> so they put the videotape in and then they, they look at me and I'm looking at it and I just, I start frowning. And the guy's like, what's wrong? Did, you know, did we... You wanted certain things. I said, no, 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 no. The video is excellent, dude. Like, can I just be left alone? Yeah, like, I had a moment, yeah, you know. Yeah. And then I looked at it and I said, 
I'm, am I burnt out? Like, what's happening? Because I don't want to do this anymore, yeah. and I don't get yeah. it. And that's when I, that's when I was getting the most offers from record companies or from artists, or, and I was living in New York, and I was just like, you know what? I think I need to chill out for a second because yeah. I don't even know what's happening. <laughs> and I had a, you know, at this time I had a talk with one of my brothers who's in the business too, and he said, he's very, as a matter of factly, so he said. You know, you're just burnt the blankety blank out. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I was like, really? You, I said, you think that's what he said? Yeah, just take off. You know, do something else. Paint. I don't know. Do something. So there I was stuck in my apartment uh, in New York, and I was just sitting around, and my best friend was a bass player. So he would keep calling me, and he was like, did you check out last night? I was like, remember the rule? You can't talk <laughs> about music. You can't. You Like, you can't. Later on, what I found out, to answer your question, was that I think I was definitely burnt out with people, yeah. you know, because yeah. how could you be burnt out with the art? There's no such thing. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. it, it, was the, it was the magnitude of the level that I was on, and, and it was just, I was doing this thing seven days a week, you know, two, two shows a day or three shows a day, mm. and it got to the point where I had a Beatles moment. We were traveling so much on a flight, my jaw started hurting. I remember, I'll never forget this. I was about 29, my jaw started hurting. And I was like, are we actually traveling that much? <laughs> and, and I talked to a, you know, one of these business guys that were doing the red eye. You remember when the red eye was popular? Yep. You know, yeah, so sure. I was doing a red eye flight all the time. And I talked with this business guy who was going from New York to South America to Asia back to and he was like you know you you could just look at <laughs> you could just look at certain people and you're like he's definitely in the zone of you know he's doing this thing yeah. so his thing was just traveling he had it all down to a science yeah so we started talking to each other we sit next to each other and he said it's very possible that your joy is hurting from flying and I said really huh. and he said yeah because you just told me that you fly every day and that you've been doing that for how long? I said six months now. You know, and he was like, and you were pre what? And I was like, yeah, we were doing like five shows before that with two yeah. days off. Not really. You sleep for like two days, you know. So uh, definitely I was burnt out. So C. Will needed to sit down for a little while and Courtney Williams needed to go have a cocktail back at the apartment <laughs> with the Bach. I did. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying yeah. to tell you, it was it was that kind of four years for yeah. real, for real. Yeah. It was that kind of four years. I did, I did anything but that was related to music. So it was like, let me go out and try golf for the first time. <laughs> How'd that work that out? That was you? awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was awful. If you've ever seen anybody not play basketball good, that was me in golf. That was like. Oh, I'm missing. Okay. I, have, I have the worst eyesight, so in order for me to golf, I'd have to have a seeing-eye dog with me to, to, <laughs> to go find to go find the ball for me. But then you got to get that stupid ball in that little. Oh, it's, never mind. Never mind. Yeah. So. Uh, but anyway, I, I have a feeling that we could probably just talk the rest of the afternoon. But what I want to do is, okay. I know that uh, Kathy here told me that uh, that we'd probably be able to find a video or two of yours that we could show the videos. Sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go try to find a video, and okay. we'll come back. Anybody and we ever call you court? Yes. Yeah. And then it even gets shorter. C. Yeah. Hey, C. But it's easier to just start out with the C. Just to, exactly. what's your name? It's C. How are they going to shorten that? C? You know, they can't really. They'll can't probably find that. a way to do yeah, it. Really, like yeah, you said. they'll find something. Um, so a couple different. We found a couple of different videos of yours. Uh, why don't you just give sure. us a little setup for the first one that we're going to do? Sure. Parkside uh, is a video that I did. Basically. These are the areas of doing your own videos. So basically, um, I've had a little background with working with CNN, you know, doing video editing mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. This is another one of my retirement for music things where I did something else completely mm -hmm. different. So I learned a little bit about video. And then I, for my label, I recorded most of my own videos, you know, as they were so i was very creative and trying to you know introduce myself and and mm -hmm. all that stuff and the song is parkside which is um on top life it's on the second one that is not out yet but will be right after this interview all right so now do it do it like a, a radio dj would do it okay 
<clears throat> on the new 16 now is the out cue to let our master control guy know that's the point where he starts starts the song. So on the new 16 now. Gotcha. Go ahead. How you doing there? My name is C. Will, and welcome to the new 16. <laughs> the song is Parkside. <laughs> Very good. You can take my job. Good uh, smile, too. <laughs> <laughs> and that nobody will see. <laughs> I don't know. Sure, but... Hey, what's up, y'all? What's going on? This is C. Will getting ready to grace you with my Top Life album. That's right, Top Life. I'm going insane trying to get this together for you. That's right, Top Life has two parts. Top Life and then Top Life Inner Self. And right now we're going to hear a song from Top Life Inner Self called Parkside. That's right, Parkside, because Parkside is all about a good vibe. All it is is that's in your mind, that good vibe that you carry. Mm, that's right, keeping the music alive. I'm singing all background vocals, lead vocals, playing all the music, drums, keyboards, bass. That's me, C. Will. All right, I got to go. I got to go, man. I got to work. I got to work it out. All right, I'll talk to you all later. Peace, I'm telling you. Have a good one. News 16 now. We're back in the studio now with Sewell. Uh, that's, uh, that's a good video. A lot of work in that? A lot of work involved? Yeah, because I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> I got to be honest with you. Uh, but it got better as I went because, you know, I had my laptop and it was like, 
listen, video person, I want you to do a video for me. And they were like, sure, for this amount of money. And I was like, right, I'll get right back to you. Yeah, let me call you back. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I was, I'm like the not technology person. That's another thing about me. Yeah. So when, um, when I got my first laptop, which was a Sony PC, you know, this is before Apple was Apple. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, already I started doing music programs on that, really cheap music programs. Yeah. And uh, my partners were like, you know, just learn whatever you can. And ah, this is the beginning of the company. Yeah. Because uh, my first album was a jazz album and, and I used all live music, you know, and I used the producer that produced with me on it. So uh, it was a contemporary jazz art uh, album that I wrote mostly and then i had a partner who wrote a couple of songs too okay so yeah how many good. how many total albums do you have i have i have six up to date and like i said in a couple of weeks part uh top life part two comes out but the first album did really good the first album charted i did some really eclectic stuff for uh i'm gonna say for independent artists okay you know uh, meaning the first album charted on dmx uh i got a call from Irvin azar that was a shock Mm -hmm. And he said, listen, we're going to take your album and we're going to do something that we're not going to do again. We're going to put you out and ex like completely, I, I don't, for lack of a better word, experiment with me, mm -hmm. you know, because it was a contemporary album that had vocals on it. And he was like, I just want to know that song that you, you wrote, or he said, you did this song with uh, a woman named Melanie Daniels. And I said, yeah, Melanie Daniels was the background singer for Michael Jackson. Okay. First call. So I got her to, you know, sing this song. A couple of things happened to that album, just two major things, which was DMX took it and they put it in over 77 airlines on the in-flight entertainment. They also put the album on Storyteller. That's the name of it. They also okay. put it on um, Cable Choice at that time because, you know, at this time was they were meshing three things at one time, the in-flight entertainment, the internet radio, and the and they were babies at that. And um, Cable Choice. Okay. You know, which Cable Choice featured your picture. You know, you had the whole... Thrrr. So they did this for two months with me. And they, I said to the, he's they asked me, what song do you want as a single? And I said, look, the album is out. Do what you want to do. Yeah. You know, like, you pick that. You know, so they picked, um, crazy enough, they picked a fusion song. Oh yeah, like it was hardcore fusion, yeah. and that's the song that went number one for two months. Huh. And um, after that, I was recording another album called Open Doors, where that's where my partners, who basically my partners are French, so it's a French American company, may we, and um, they took me to France, and I met a big promoter in France, and he allowed me to open up for Earth, Wind, and Fire. Wow. Which was amazing. Yeah. Because, um, wow, there's just, okay, so that was amazing. Then uh, my third out well, that album, I did a lot of festivals with Open Doors. All right. Then the third album, I didn't really do anything to the third album because Reality was an album, I think, how can I, how can I put that? I didn't get ahead of myself, but I was looking for something that wasn't there. Hmm, let me say okay. that now looking back. Because, of course, the commercialism of music, I wanted to, you know, be a complete pop. So yeah. this would be my first album, actually, that I would sing on. Okay. And that I would experiment with playing the instruments and writing. Blah, blah. So I didn't really do anything with that because I was hearing so many no's. Yeah. From every, everybody was just like, no, that's not working. Did you kind of get to a point in your own head where you're like, well, why does this why does this guy got to get a piece of the money? Why is this girl got to get a piece of the money? Wait. I can do it myself. No, but I mean yes, everybody kind of gets to a point where I can do that. I can do that De just as good as Joe. Well, you know what happened? That's why the or that's, Jay, as that, the case, right. baby. <laughs> <laughs> or J. <Je> uh, <laughs> no, this is this is the album where just like you said, this is the album that all of that would happen and more. Yeah. Meaning we were going back into France because uh, the major radio station that's like Z100 in New York right. or your hit station, yeah. we had contacts with the programmer direct and the owner of the station. So through all of this stuff that happened to me in France, I would go back and forth, record three songs, excuse me, in New York, and then go back and record 
and and let the radio station hear it and they were like "Uh uh-huh uh-huh great no that's not it yeah and okay so in this in this chapter of of this thing happening i started thinking a lot because i was like but why am i here though I'm yeah. good enough to be here, but I'm not good enough to be on. That's cool. I can deal with that, you know, because maybe I'm not. Yeah. You know, so I didn't think about that too much. I never do. Because uh, I know that there's more no's than yeses here. That's you a- know, so 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 when I went, basically what happened is we ended up spending a lot of money and nothing happened nothing over happened, there. Yeah. Um, then I was told by one of the biggest lawyers, music lawyers in France, uh, who was a judge on one of the, like, uh, voice shows you know like one of the idol shows that mm-hmm. they have over there he said you know you're an american guy and guess what you're less than one percent over here hmm. and really that's the truth yeah so it was just like oh, that was the whole meeting wow that meeting was about <laughs> 30 seconds all yeah. right well thank you have a nice you know, day exactly so when Can i had to get to the tower because i want to go check that out <laughs> Exactly. Well, we got another three weeks left. Okay. Uh, woof. And you know, in France, they have like a they have a uh, a vacation. It's like every week is like nine days off in a seven day week. It's like, can I have a business meeting? No, it's uh, bread day. I was like, what the? What is this? I can't. Okay. Anyway, um, so I came back to New York, and here we are with uh, New York. I went to see a big producer in New York who was. A French American guy who had brought a lot of the European artists over, blah blah blah, gold and platinum records all over his walls. He listened to my next album because while I was dealing with no from you know reality, which I named it reality because I kept getting no, mm-hmm. um, and people were like, "Oh, vocals." So let's not even talk about that. Let's just uh, move on to. I don't think this is the format, uh, you know, wh- whatever yeah. they would say. But basically, hey, we're not putting you on. Yeah, boom. Yeah. Uh, I was recording another album, which I already had the title to, which was Frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I wonder how that happened. <laughs> I wonder how that happened. So I was, re- I was in the center of recording this album when I was out on tour with, I'm not going to name the person, but I was out on tour with somebody who was not paying me. Okay. Okay. Uh, but that came, the title came from that because I got evicted from my apartment three times. And this was a money issue, and it was really bad. It was really nasty. It got very nasty. And um, I was midway through the album when the studio guy that owned the studio in New York said to me, you know what? You're going through a lot of stuff. I tell you what. Just finish recording the album, and don't worry about nothing. Okay. So, I, you know, I backed off of that because I don't like to do business like that. Yeah. So I said, well, no. He said, well, Courtney, we've known you since you were like 14. Then when he said it like that, and he was like, don't worry about it. We know you're good for it. Just finish recording. So yeah. I said, okay, well, that's coming from the musical heart, so let me do it. Boom, I walked into that trap. About five songs later, I finished Frustrated. Okay. Now, I had a cover song from Marianne Faithful, um, Fallen from Grace, which was one of my favorite songs that she did. And I did, um, I did an instrumental of that, but my... The thing about this album was now I was ready. I was ready vocally, and I know what I wanted. You know, like yeah. I was coming into my own as a music artist. And there was, I was very smart about the marketing because I had no money. So mm-hmm. I was like, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this CD, and I'm going to give it to 10 press, you know, I'm going to do 10 press releases. Let's see what they do, yeah. what magazines do or if it catches on. One guy called me in particular. He was great. He um, he said to me, listen, I think I can get this to CD 101.9. And I was like, bah, that's fine. Whatever, dude. Get, yeah. Because I had so many no's, you know, like I just lived no. So I was like, okay, that's not going to happen. So thanks a lot. You know, Anthony's his name. And I got to mention his name because that changed everything. That changed the whole entire thing with my company. Yeah. Because... I got a call. I was in California playing for an artist named T.M. Stevens, a big bass player who used to play. He was Miles Davis's main bass player at one point. T.M.'s a rock guy now, you know, so we were out uh, rocking in California at the NAMM show. And I get a call two days later from Rave Gomez in my room. And he's like, hey, Courtney, this is Rave Gomez from CD 101.9. 
I'm, you know, tripping. I'm like, really? <laughs> and he said, no, I'm serious. So it took a while because yeah. I have a lot of friends that play jokes on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, sure. all right, so I got it. He said, listen, not only do I want to feature you, but I'm going to do this show on you. Because he said, this is, he said, this is a really nice album because give me your other stuff. So now I'm like anxious to get home. I got home. I sent him the other three albums and he was like, you don't have a fingerprint. Like every album is different. He said, but it's not so far. Like there is a style inside of you and I hear it, but it's just different every time. Yeah. And um, he said, within the style that you have. And so I said, thanks, man. I, I think. Is that good? <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> now, Rave, again, he asked me, which is your favorite song on the album? I said, well, on on this album, it's a it's a song called My Blue Shoes. It's an instrumental, and I don't know, you know, whatever you're playing or whatever. I said, but it's a, you know, it's a blues. It's like a contemporary dance blues kind of. Yeah. So he heard it. Um, and then he called me back and he was like, I have your album inside of my Jeep. Every time I drive from New York to New Jersey, he said, it's just there. Like it, I won't take it out because it's a really good album. So I said, well, thank you. Then I, all right. The big day comes where he plays me on prime time. It's Friday night. The slot is from eight to 10. Yeah. And he's doing this whole thing on drummers. So he starts out with Buddy Rich. He starts out with Billy Cobham. He goes, you know, he's trying to fit everything that they're playing contemporary that's kind of like you can kind of dance to. Sort yeah. Of. So he goes through all the drums, Phil Collins, now, you know, just everybody. And then he says, Was a little was was your lip coming down a little bit further for everyone dude, to like we're starting sitting to pout? There. Now listen starting to, this, to pout thinking this he's going to lead you out. Story. This is a <laughs> Exactly right, right. Exactly. This is this is a humble story because you got to imagine we're in this tiny box apartment with champagne. Because my partners, if my partners are French, so they're like, if you breathe, we should celebrate. You know, like <laughs> what happened? You walked the dog. Let's celebrate. You know, like so. So we're sitting there. You have his number by chance, man? Yeah. Let me get <laughs> <laughs> put that in my phone here real quick <laughs> exactly exactly so he said he said um he said you know now we have this local guy and now we're sitting in this room i gotta tell you my living room was like the size of that tv screen right there okay you know? so we're sitting there we're all like this and we're like this and then i hear this song and of course i have like the biggest stereo and man can ever invent in this room right you know so i'm turning it up i'm cranking it up and they're just looking at me, and of course I got emotional. And then after that was over, I got very drunk. And <laughs> <laughs> you know, then after that, I was like, they said, "What did it feel like?" And I was like, "That is," cr I said, "I said, you know what? Now I understand radio. Radio just has this magic sprinkle dust that just goes over you, and it just doesn't go away." I said, "Now I understand." So I have another respect for you guys, actually. Now I yeah. understand. I understand this. You know what I mean? Yeah. The problem and is the magic sprinkle dust came my way one time, and I went, "What? What's that?" <laughs> really? Yo, really? Yeah. I mean, come on. It missed me. <laughs> well, no, look. I mean, here, here, here's another chapter of my life because these are moments in music. Meaning, okay, after that was over, it was like rinse due. Yeah, what, what, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. okay, you had your 15 seconds, rinse yeah. due, uh -huh. you know, um, I'm still, I was still at that time living in, in the zone of reality. Like, it, you know, New York doesn't, care. okay, we're talking about New York. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I just got played on the radio there. Like, so? and, uh, what yeah, that anyway, coming? um, what time is the train coming yeah. down? You know, it like, doesn't care. Nobody cares about that. Um, but I was happy. Uh, I, I accomplished a lot. I got very close to Rave, and then he told me CD 101 was closing. Mm -hmm. You know, so it closed as a radio station. And um, he went on. This is now we're talking about a gap because I actually moved to Dubai during this time period. The other I thing, get phone calls from Dubai all the time. You do? Yeah. Wow. They're looking for money. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is what they do very good. They do this very well. Let me tell you, they do this very well. Um, yeah, but I, I, I went there because the other part of my company, the entertainment part, is the sci-fi thing that I told you. Okay, big yeah. sci-fi yeah. So 
the people who I really like are, uh, you know, people like um, that I look at for projects that I always think are interesting um, are, I'm, I'm kind of old school, so Ringling Brothers, let's mm-hmm. start with that. Yeah. And then Walt Disney and then Richard Branson and then I have my tech stuff, you know, I love Pixar pictures, you know, for all this stuff. So I have a brother. I've had, I have three brothers and one sister, but one brother in particular was always into stage and developing light shows and you know when kiss was playing and they had like uh uh explosions on stage and all of this stuff so my brother was always like that's incredible yeah. let me experiment in the house like that <laughs> let me blow up so so he's like courtney look at this boy you know here comes my father going you're in the punishment for nine years you know like <laughs> so anyway i, I grew up around that and <clears throat> later on one of my things were if I had a company, I wanted to combine uh, music and art together. Mm-hmm. So this is where the art came in. And now I developed a show called The Empire Event, which starts in December. Can, let's let's hold off on talking about that. Let's okay. play another one of your videos, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the show coming up in December. Got it. All right. So uh, Mike in our master control room uh, has got the next video for us. I'm not sh- sure which one he's going to do, okay. so we'll leave it his pick, okay? Sure. All right. Here's the uh, the next video from the new 16 now.
then I fall may we On top of the world, can't you see? See will, cause I know that I can Know that I will, know I'm the man Like a lion in the jungle I'm the king in the rumble Dropping nuclear beats Keeping it close to the street And all the kids, they love it Women, they love it Guys, they love it Cause I'm bringing it to you And I'm shouting it out I got all the clout What it's about? What it's about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 New 16, now it's Jim Steele live in the studios with the man from the videos that we're watching, C. Will. You know what I noticed, and, and i got to point this out. Um, there's a couple of videos. You look in person sitting next to me right now like maybe you've dropped a couple of pounds over oh, time. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I was, um, <clears throat> at the time that I was doing those videos, let's see, it's 2012 now. <laughs> that was 2008. Yeah. 2000, yeah, 2008, 2009. And I was just coming back from Dubai. I was living there for four years. So, you know, I kind of like caught up on American food. Yeah. And uh, I blew up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, because I, was, I, I wasn't starving in Dubai, but, you know, that heat at 144 degrees as an average. Wow. You know, and on a hot day, it was a Well, that's not a hot day? No. A hot day is 162. And they can't wow. tell you that. So they're wow. like, we're peaking at 145 today. We're like, wow, 145 sure didn't feel like that yesterday. Wow. That's interesting. You know, uh, yeah, but it was really very interesting trip. No, I just pointed that out. Uh, now, you have a big thing coming up in December, so we're going to come back and talk about that. Okay. Uh, a couple of the students here at the new school work on different reports for us, so you know what's going on. Okay, uh, So Naya and Dan are out in Studio B, and we're going to check in with them right now. All right. Hello. Well, Courtney, Hello. good job. Yay! I, Thank you. I love the video. And um, the dude dancing in the back was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yes, those two dancers were great. I mean, actually, they're choreographers, but they're great, you know, great people to work with. I would good. love to see Mike dance like that. <laughs> I would love to. Um, Mike, why don't you come out and do a little dance and come out from behind the master control board and just do a little dancing? I'd love to see Jim dance like that as I, well. I don't do any. I don't do any dancing like that. Would you like yeah. to see me dance like that? I, you know what Dan I do? Can dance. We can. I can do. I, I can do my Gangnam style. Yeah. We can do that. No, we're not, right. no, we're not. No, we're not doing no, no, that no, today. No, no. no, not today. Uh, so you're working oh. on an event for us? Yes. Okay. okay. Dancing, McGarry's Irish Pub in Albany. Happy hour. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, I like it. Starts hour. at yeah. three o'clock. Get some soda. And meet some meet some fine ladies and fellas and uh, meet. See, Will, can you catch a later train than the one that you're originally Listen, catching? That, you already got me going. Maybe I should stay one more night. I'm go. very serious. I have I have no life. Have. Dan's going. All right. Oh yeah. Punch are you gonna Are you gonna go? Um, I don't. I don't think I can go. <laughs> <laughs> that, that caught you off guard. You're just like. I, I. Yeah, I I don't know yeah. if they're Why gonna let me go? have soda. Um, because that kind of soda isn't isn't soda for me. Well, I thought that maybe you would have gotten the date wrong or something. No. Oh, you see, I didn't, leaving, I didn't hear him. I didn't hear leaving him. Leaving so. things in the past, okay? What? He goes. Oh. I didn't hear him. My headphone volume wasn't up high enough. I have no oh, idea. Oh, I am so done with you guys. Are you serious? Dan, what do you got going on over there? Um, what kind I, of nonsense are you working on? Oh, I don't have nonsense. I have very important things to discuss. <laughs> For example, uh, regional retail outlook. Uh, it's going to be at the Albany Colony Regional Chamber. You can join the conversation about our local econ uh, economy. And uh, the fee to get in is $10. 
Okay. Other than that, uh, moving our way up north, uh, the Clifton Park Transfer Station on Visher Ferry Road is still accepting bushes and brush. Anyone have any uh, bushes and brush they want to get rid of? Um, I got, I'm good. I oh, <laughs> got, got rid of all of mine. Okay. Uh, now you got any brush or bushes? I got a lot of brush. Okay. All right. Uh, other than that, it's uh, Gaffney's in Saratoga's 30th anniversary. Has anyone ever been to Gaffney's? Been there a couple times. Never been yep. to Gaffney's. What's this Gaffney's? This sounds fun. Uh, Gaffney's is good. It, it, it's a good place to have, uh, you know, some soda. Uh, <laughs> great patio. Love the patio there. However, now we're going to have a little fun because it's Gaffney's uh, 30th anniversary. It's a little did you know um, uh, of people that have visited Gaffney's. Apparently, uh, Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman visited Gaffney's when they were shooting Billy Bath Kate. Okay. And wow. Yeah. Okay. I actually had uh, an aunt that was in <clears throat> Billy Bathgate. Uh, she got to have dinner with Dustin Hoffman on account of that. Uh, she didn't tell me that much about Dustin Hoffman, but uh, I, I hear that he's short. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, other, that's true. Mm. Other than that, uh, yeah, Sally Jesse Raphael enjoyed her soda and tonic at Gaffney's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Greg Allman walked out on a $38 bill at Gaffney's. Shame <laughs> on you, Greg Allman. Oh, wow. Maybe he, just, maybe he just forgot. Wait, do they only sell soda at Gaffney's? Or? <laughs> yeah. Yep, that's it. That's all they got. I'm pretty sure you can get so orange juice. So I can't juice. go there either. No, we can't go there. Great. Oh, you can go there. I'll just, I'll just go to Friendly's. Hmm? <laughs> There's only one of those left around here. My so. chicken nuggets and So you're going to be in fries. Clifton Park. Is that is that everything? Is that what we got? That's well, what we got. There's a couple other uh, famous people that have been into Gaffney's. Uh, we got a uh, was it Chris Penn visited Gaffney's. Uh, Jeremy Shockey. Uh, well, does anyone know who Shockey plays for nowadays? Mm, no. Nope. Me either. Well, it's a good thing you know. <laughs> Saints maybe. I don't know. Uh, I'm pretty sure. He, yeah, he might still be with the Saints. Could be. But other than that, uh, Steppenwolf, the Moody Blues, and Mr. Mellow Yellow, Donovan, was uh, had visited Gaffney's. Uh, Steve Miller Band, Bobby Vickers oh, wow. of NASCAR, Kevin Connolly, and Anthony Michael Hall had visited Gaffney's at one point. Hmm. We'll have to get Sea Will out there. Put that add Sea Will to the list. Courtney Williams put Courtney right on that. On, right, put Court right on that list right there. <laughs> oh, you're C. calling him Court? <laughs> yeah, we're, oh, yeah, we're yeah, tight. Yeah, yeah. We're tight. Oh, now, okay. So. Yeah. Besties for life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what it is. Well, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. No problem. All right. No um, problem. All right. Now, we're back to back to what's coming up in December. But I want to back you up just okay. for one more thing before we get to that. Sure. Now, you're talking about the progression through all of your different albums. Sure. And you said that one of the songs, which wasn't the song that you expected mm -hmm. would be a, a smash hit, winds up on the charts for, for a couple of months. Yeah. Um, a number one song. Yep. Okay. What's the phone call like for for that one? That like was, was was it a phone call? Do you? I mean, how yes, did you it, find yes, out? How did you find out about it? Well, first of all, I didn't find out it was on the I didn't find out it was on the charts until I went to the Caribbean to open up a festival. At the at this time, I was opening up a festival. Uh, Yannick Noah, the tennis player, uh, who turned rock star, uh, was the head of a festival in the Caribbean on the island of Saint Bart. So. The promoter, the main promoter, was making me the guy now that would open up the festival show. And Yannick Noah okayed it. So <clears throat> I'm there getting ready to go on. And this is uh, October because mm -hmm. um, they had agreed to really start marketing me by the end of September. So in the middle of October, one of my partners comes to me with a paper. And he's j he just opens it up. And he's like, look. And I was like, well, what is this, some kind of chart? You know, so I'm looking down the chart, and he's like, just keep looking. And then I see my name, and I see this song, and I see the record label. Yeah. And I said, wow. And he said, you see that? So it was number, at that time, it was number three with a bullet. Three with a bullet. Three with a bullet, going up. You know that's going to number one. Oh, wow. So I was excited. So, of course, we celebrated again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was instant celebration again. Yeah. And, um... Then about two days later, it was number one, and it stayed that way until the beginning of December. Hmm. You know, and the record, you know, the record industry goes in quarters. Yeah. So uh, that was a nice check. Yeah. 
That that was really nice, and that's the first time I actually saw anything. Like yeah. I saw my publishing, and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> that's what happens." So um, after that, uh, I went to after we did this festival. The following year, my partners were asking me about Dubai. Have I ever heard of it? Because <laughs> one of my partner's brothers was already doing business over there. So I said, no, I didn't. And then my best friend called me and was like, hey, guess what, man? And I was like, no, what? And he was like, I need a drummer, and I'm going to Dubai in this band. So do you want to come? But everybody knew my thing at that time was, I can't stand playing covers. Yeah. You know, for then, at this moment. And um, he was like, but there's a catch. And I was like, what's the catch? He was like, you have to play covers. And I was like, what? That that wasn't the catch. The catch was I played seven nights a week, and we did four sets a night. Wow. No, oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, seven nights a week, we did five sets a night. Wow. We did five sets, and, and each set had to have nine to 11 songs. That's just crazy. That's right. insanity. Right. So I had to do this for three months. But but that's why when you're walking down the hallways here in this building, there's cash just falling out of your pocket. <laughs> That's exactly why uh, yeah, that's okay. happening. Yeah, yeah, right. And, and in the other pocket is my landlord going, "Where's the rent?" Right. You know. No. Um, no. I mean, it was it was interesting. Yeah, that was interesting because I didn't see anything until I came out of that. You can imagine. I yeah, didn't see nothing. Yeah. I was like, "What? What? Today is what time?" Oh, sound check. Oh, God, let me get coffee. Yeah. No espresso. Yeah. yeah. At that point, but um. I, I did the contract, and then after that, my partners were like, because <laughs> they, they fade in and out with me. So they're like, this looks like a really nice place to do some business. So you you want to talk about the you want to talk about the project to anybody here? Because again, this was the project that I was developing. Now back in New York during this whole festival and my thing going number one time, I did an event called the Chocolate Strawberry Vibe, which was the brother. Or the son, no, I'm going to say the son of the Empire event. That's the other event that I'm working on now. Okay. Um, but it's finished and it's going to start in December. Um, but I did this project first and it did so good. Um, a studio was interested, a major studio in New York City was interested in buying it from me. And this is right before I left for Dubai. And my partners were like, this is great because we're going to take that with us. You were going to say no, and we're going to take that with us over there and explain that. So I did, and it was great <clears throat> because I met a lot of people firsthand. I met Richard Branson. By the way, I had already worked for him, mm -hmm. and he's a drummer. So I had already, you know, worked for him, and, you know, I had to refresh his memory. Like, you don't remember me, but I'm one of your employees from when I was <laughs> 17. He was like, oh, please. I, I can't even remember what I did yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, we talked, and he he was intrigued by the vision that I had of this thing. Through him and through a couple of other people, I met a very interesting guy named James Law Cybertexture. This guy, that was his name, literally, James Law Cybertexture, <laughs> because he had 70, at that time, he had 75, we're talking about 2006, so he had 75 projects in Dubai of building buildings. One of the buildings was built like an iPod. So like you walk into this bathroom and like computers come out and scan you and then wow. your body comes on the wall and you see like your skeleton. Huh. Like, you know, wild stuff like that. So Oh, I don't need to see that. Right, exactly. It's what I said. It's like I don't want to go to the bathroom no. and see that every no, no, morning. No. It's not, you know, <laughs> not a mammogram of me. I don't want to see what's failing, right? No, you know? No, 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 no. <laughs> no. So anyway, this guy, um, I started talking to him about what's going on. And he said, you like sci-fi, don't you? And I said, yeah, sci-fi is what I grew up with. You know, and I love that concept of trying to mix sci-fi with music. Mm -hmm. So we talked about the project, which it was a, the project is aimed at the audience. It's a very hands-on experience for the audience from the time that they come in the room to the time they leave. I perform in it and my music is there. And music is always happening around. So it's kind of like, you know what it's kind of like? It's kind of like if you walked inside, of a, if you were on stage just walking around a Broadway play. 
Mm-hmm. But the difference is certain things are catering to you while you're having that experience. Yeah. So, you know, without giving too much away. This starts in December in Chelsea and Manhattan, and it runs for two years. Wow. Uh, until 2014. So I'm excited about it. Because and it's how frequent? What's what's the frequency of it? It's uh, four shows a month, um, mostly, you know, for the weekend, Friday or Saturday. <clears throat> and it's a two and a half hour show. You know, so we get you in and we get you out. But while you're in there, your mind is being blown. Lighting and sound and, you know, just the whole food and beverages included, you know. And the ticket price is beautiful. Yeah. It's really beautiful that sounds great you know so um it's a tourist thing and a local thing we're trying to make it happen like so is this do you have do you have something uh posted on a website or a facebook page or something like if somebody wants to find out a little more information about this thank you for saying that uh (laughs) (laughs) i was gonna talk about that my first of all my main site is www.cwillthenumber1.com so c-w-i-l-l the number one dot com after that, uh, all of my links are there for Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, blah, blah, blah. But um, the event is called the Empire Event. So I'm in the center. While we're interviewing, I'm in the center of building that site, mm-hmm. which it'll say that. You'll dial it up on Google, and that's what's going to come up. But for right now, I have a like page on Facebook mm-hmm. that is the Empire Event Premiere Showcase. Okay. So that's what it's called, the Empire Event Premiere Showcase. Um, that will come up on Facebook, and you can like it already because if you like it, basically what I'm doing with that page is I'm doing discounts on tickets, uh, special perks inside of the event when you're there, and that kind of thing. All right. Um, now I know that we have one more video of yours. Do you remember which one we have left? I sure don't. You sure don't? You're right. Ah, yes, the bitter end live. Yes. That's funny how it just magically came <laughs> to you like that. <laughs> it just popped right thank, into your head. Thank or you. In parentheses on, right. on the side. In parentheses. Thank you. Thank no. you, Mike, on the side yes, in the master thank control you. room. Uh, master control. Thank you. <laughs> yes, it's the bitter end. Uh, yeah. Okay. So basically, what this is is uh, me stepping out front and doing um, my show. Uh, which it was a variety of me playing drums and singing and uh, doing that thing live. All right. And it's on the new 16 now. All right. Yeah. It's time to go in deep. My name is C. Will. The website, though, is www.cwill, www.cwill, the number one, dot com. That's where you can catch me with everything going on. But the other thing is, I'm a drummer who's done a lot of stuff. So I'm no rookie to this game. <laughs> Now Bobby's played 
for everybody under the sun too. But you're gonna hear that. I ain't gonna say nothing else. I'm gonna let him do what he do. And I'm gonna just ask everybody to leave the stage except for bass, percussion, and keys. Even me, I'm leaving. I'm gonna know the gig because I wanna see this shit.
16 now. It's Jim Steele. We are live from the studios of the New School Center for Media Thursday afternoon. A day going by uh, pretty pretty quickly today because I'm in studio with C. Will, Courtney Williams, or Court, C. or I mean, all, <laughs> all these different nicknames for you. Now, we're watching that video right there, and you know, I was talking to you. I mean, one of the most amazing things, the, the guitar player in that. Yes, Bobby that, Bell. He was, that guitar was speaking like a language. Definitely. Like a, a musical language of its Definitely. own, and one of the cool things about uh, about uh, artists to me, as far as instruments go, is they kind of each have their own different language. Like That's Richie right. Sambora, you know, he, he he makes his guitar speak. That's right. Um, That's right. He does. You know, Santana, he obviously. Oh. Come, you know that. That's like twelve, thirteen different languages all right. wrapped up into one. Um, you know, that's that's like. Uh, but see, we, we were talking about that earlier. We were, you, we were talking about how people play their experience of life through the instrument, and it's a thing that you just like, what the, wow, yeah. you know what I mean? So that's what's happening. You know, that's what's happening. I had the privilege of of um, playing with Ron Wood when he had a solo when I played for Mary Ann Faithful and. You know, Ron Woods is Ron Woods from the Stones. So when he came up there, I mean, you know, I didn't, I've never seen him play live. Well, I don't want to say that, but I really didn't. But, yeah, you know, yeah. so I didn't know what to expect. But when he started playing, like you said, it was a completely different ball game altogether. Yeah. I was like, wow, this guy can, he, I mean, we were past, he can really play. You know, it was just like another, like you said, another language was coming out. Yeah. And he didn't, it wasn't a fancy roar or anything like that, but it was just his life experience again. You know, yeah. like, and I saw that while I was looking at him while I was playing. I was like, wow, that's all I can say. Because you you can't speed that up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you can't speed up your life and go, I want to sound like that. That's what you're saying. Yeah. But you can't, there's nothing you can do. One day you'll get to that. Yeah, <laughs> but it'll be yours. You know what I mean. So. Now, one experience that um, that that happened to you, let's say when you were, <coughs> excuse, uh-huh. excuse me, when you were younger. Mm-hmm. Let's take an experience from when you were younger sure. and move to today. Oh. What one experience, if you could have a do over on, not because it went bad or because you needed to change something about it, but what one do over would you take from your musical experience? from let's say your early 20s or your late teens or early 20s that you'd get to redo today Hmm. i'm definitely gonna say when i did a drum solo in south america really yeah this is very interesting to me because of course i came from 22 piece drum sets and like mega ah, you know so i had a teacher who broke me down and then i went back to that because he was like Oh, my God, take away these drums. You know, there's 900 sounds on one drum. But you don't know that yet. Okay, so here we go. You know, so he starts teaching me. Um, his name is Hassan Hakim, Omar Hakim's father. Very famous drummer. Um, Omar Hakim played with Sting for a long time. Uh, okay. And uh, Dream of the Blue Turtles tour and all of that stuff. So bottom line was um, his father was like Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> this this little man, you know, like with a trombone, but of course in Queens, New York, he knows a thousand people. You know, this is a he was an editor too. He he was the main reason why you can have uh instrumentalists or vocalists sing in the subway or on the street now legally. Yeah. He actually, you know, uh made that bill happen for New York. So bottom line is he was teaching me and he the first thing he said was get rid of the drums you know start from basic but anyway later on i went back to that because at this point you know i could understand the language of drums a little bit more and um i remember touring with the latin circuit this would be amazing to me because you know the first thing that you do as a latin drummer you learn how to play timbales they put you on that first before you do anything they're like learn that because that's like that's a whole orchestra right there Again, you don't know that, mm-hmm. but, you know, da, da, da. so I learned, you know, I learned basics on that. And um, then I got a call to play for this group called Proyecto Uno. They were huge in Latin America, like the Michael Jackson of Latin America. Okay. You know, so we went there. The It was a split band, part mm-hmm. American and then part, you know, uh, South American in terms of everybody was from everywhere. Yeah. You know, so here I go. 
we're doing whole stadiums. So it's like 120,000 people, you know. So they're like, you know, man, you play so good. We want to feature you, you know. And I had had experiences soloing. I was like, oh, sure, you know. So they're like, okay, we're going to feature you in this sequence of a song, and everybody's going to leave the stage, and then you got the lights, the smoke, the whole, da, 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 do your thing. Okay, yeah. right? So I'm getting ready to play, and I get into my solo. I got my eyes closed all tight. You know, I'm, I'm like, any second now, that crowd is going to be cheering. Just wait, you know, till I get to the heart of this thing, you know, till I peek it up. And I peek it up, and then I stop. And then everybody in the audience is pretty much talking with <laughs> They're uh, talking. Okay. So I didn't understand it. So I was like, get the blankety blank out of here. Yeah. What was that? And so then the band came back in. Everybody was da 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 da. And I said, what happened? And nobody said anything. A second night like that happened. A third night like that. So by the third night, I was like, hey, guys. Like. They put the drum solo in the intermission, did they? No, the drum solo was a featured thing yeah. in the show. Like, you know, I mean, in some of my other bands, it was the intermission. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, it was, a, it was a boom. I was featured, you know. So check this out. So I, I, I listened to, his name is Raphael. He was the manager, one of the managers of the guys and older guy really knowledgeable about music and all of this other stuff so he goes you know courtney do you know how to dance salsa and i was like no I don't no and he was like oh, okay 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 he's like all right i have a friend when we get to uh venezuela she's gonna come to the you know hotel after the show and i haven't seen her in a long time but i'm gonna ask her to take you out dancing so i'm thinking Oh, yeah. man, yeah, this is going to be great, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about my average night out, you know, like, mm -hmm. oh, she's just a ah, beautiful woman. Blah, 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 blah. So we go out, and she's like, I'll be right back. I'm just going to the bathroom. I just want to freshen up. So, you know, she goes to the bathroom, and she comes out in this completely different attire. Yeah. She has a red dress on, red shoes, and it looks like, her hair pulled back. She looks like she's getting ready to really do something <laughs> with the dance floor. So I'm sitting there going. Oh, those big roughly dresses at right, the bottom. Right. Yes. Yeah. And yes. And yeah. so she's like, you know how to dance salsa? And I said, no. She says, well, you know. You're going to. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and, she, and so now the club is like, you know, the music is banging. Everybody's dancing. And out walks this bombshell of a woman. Grabs my hand. And she's like in the center of the floor. So I'm just like, ugh. And she's like, okay, here's the thing you need to know. When we speak the language, it's in a rhythm. She said, the same rhythm that you dance to. And she was like, the same rhythm that you should be playing to. Hmm. And I was like, so, you know, uh, I listened to that. We danced and I tripped a couple of times. <laughs> and uh, I got a couple more drinks and then the dancing just made sense to me. And, uh, and then you tripped a couple and more then times. And then I couple tripped, then I tripped <laughs> even more times. And then she was like, well, that was interesting. But she said, I think you understand what I mean. And so I said, okay. So when I saw Raphael the next day at Soundcheck, I said, thanks a lot, man. I, I got it. I see what you did. And um, that night when I did my solo, boom, I got the response that I was thinking that I could get. Really? You know, I got, yeah, it was amazing because, you know, it was a, now I'm soloing in the language of the, of the people. So and, you, know, you and I didn't really plan the, the whole language, me talking about the guitar player playing right. a different language, but right. it really kind of does come, it, come down to that. It so matters. Yeah. Like it's so ma it, Even in my music production to today, it matters. Like what do the kids want to hear? What do the adults want to hear? What does the middle want to hear? Urgh. Right, because I mean, you know, and, and, and it, all, it all relates to it <clears throat> relates to the audience. I mean, I talk to I teach radio, right. so I mean, I talk to students all the time about relating to the audience, and yeah. some audiences are gonna like, uh, you know, a Tommy Lee drummer, and right. some audiences are gonna like a, a <laughs> right. Rick Allen drummer, <laughs> right, um, right, you know, and it's, and it's very is it's interesting when one musician at some point can make everybody happy. And make people say this thing, which I love when people say that, when they say, I don't really like that kind of stuff, but, you know, 
that was fantastic. Oh, yeah. that was uh, yeah. I'll come and definitely see that again. I mean, yeah. wow, you know. So, I think that there's a connection with the language, like you said, with people. So you can change the language to to fit you personally. Can change the language to be appropriate to the audience that's participating. Definitely. Yeah, that's very Definitely. cool. Definitely. Um, Dan, are you Dan? Dan's looking out there like he might have something to say. I'm kind of scared. Dan is our scary person. <laughs> What is that? Uh, no, he's he's just kind of scary. He he sneaks up on you. <laughs> you never know when he's coming. You're never exactly sure what he's going to say or what he wants to say. He's got to turn on the microphone button out there. There you go. Um, so and, no, and I, I did just, it. And he just kind of snuck up there. Um, <laughs> what? It, it, is everything all good? Is everybody out oh, there yeah. in that room safe? Uh, you know, because yes, <laughs> very safe. Okay. <laughs> Well, it's it, it, very safe. Uh, although I was enjoying the uh, the conversation about the guitar and the drumming. Yeah. Uh, I, I felt that Guar was a little bit left out, though. Um, <laughs> See, this, uh, is, this, is, this is what I'm talking about with him. Just, I like that. You just uh, never know where he's going to go. <laughs> I, I found out some important information about today. Uh, today is uh, National Cook Something Bold Day, but it is also National Dunce Day. And that's that may be why I'm sitting in the corner. I'm not sure, but uh, um, I, I like to cook something uh, bold day. Okay, so go do it. Well, uh, I don't have access to a stove. That's going to be a problem then. Yes, it will. <laughs> I I have a lighter. I could I could loan you. <clears throat> I all, all I really have are cough drops. How how do cough drops taste heated up? All right. All right, you figure out what to cook. Uh, we'll talk to you later. I appreciate the update. Uh, thanks for oh, thanks no for problem. sneaking in on me. I appreciate it. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> All right, Dan. All right, he's he's crazy. He's a nut. This kid is a nut. I love it. I love um, it. You know, and 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 he kind of expresses himself in a you know in a in a unique kind of way. <laughs> he's great to have around because he always brings a smile to my face, and that's kind of an important thing too. Oh, definitely. So. Definitely. Uh, uh, but I, I think it's great that you came in today. I, I appreciate it. You came here with the purpose of working on working. Right. Um, and, and this to you is work, but this for me was just fun, just hanging out and getting to chat hey. with you all afternoon. Cool. cool. Um, I have fun too. So let's talk about let's talk about uh, uh, December one okay. more time before you, before you head out. Definitely. December is the Empire event. Uh, there will be anywhere from four to six shows. You can find out more information about the Empire event if you're in Manhattan. And if you want to bring your family out or your friends or whatever, uh, it's that kind of show. is for a general mass audience, and the tickets will be on sale starting December. Uh, actually, my first, I actually have the first dates are the 21st and the 22nd of December. Okay. And then after that, you know, I'm not going to say too much to the audience. You can definitely... Find out more on www.cwill, the number one dot com. So cwill one dot com. That will link you up to the sites. Um, I have a like page for the event on Facebook, which is facebook.com uh, forward slash and then the Empire Event Premiere Showcase. So that's the full title. The Empire Premier, uh, the Empire Event Premiere Showcase is my like page on Facebook. And again, you definitely want to like it because that's where all of the discounts are going to be for ticket sales and blah, blah, blah. And uh, I also, you know, searched some of your videos on YouTube. So just do see Will at uh, YouTube. Yeah. And you can you find can, all the stuff. Yeah. Find out whether, you, whether you know, if you like some of the videos that you saw this afternoon, there's more like it. Sure. Uh, there's some other stuff there. So you sure. can check out all those and uh, find out whether they want to go to this show or not. Great. Dan, are you signaling me that you have something to say again? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm still actually, scared. I'm still scared. I have something in honor of uh, Cook Something Bold Day. Okay. I, oh, I have right. cooked up a uh, Tootsie Roll and Cheez-It sandwich. <laughs> Would you like a bite? <laughs>